Hi, this is Peter Wolf. I'm a mentor for First Team 2590 Robbinsville High School, Team Nemesis. And this year, Andy Mark challenged teams to produce a video describing the proper electrical layout for the 2011 electrical subsystem. And all our electrical work this year was done by uh, two freshman team members, uh, Julia and Jenna, AKA J Squared, or the Dynamic Duo, or as most of the team referred to them, the Gruesome Twosome. So I'd like to introduce Julia and Jenna. These gals put the E in electrical. They put the B in butt splice, and they'll be leading you through the correct layout for your 2011 electrical subsystem. So without further ado, please take it away, Jenna and Julia. The circuit breaker, power distribution board, the digital sidecar, the Jaguar speed controller, the spike relay, and the Anderson battery connectors. This is a fully functioning electronics board for the 2011 robotics competition. This year we had a two-tier electronics board, but we removed the top part so that you can see the bottom part fully. We'll show you this part first and later show you the top tier. Here is an overview of the first tier of our electronics board for this year's robot. And you can see that we have many of our main components as well as the CRIO mounted on this bottom level. Here's the circuit breaker, and it is connected to the positive side of the battery connector, which is then connected to the negative on the power distribution board. The Anderson connector connects to the battery, and which provides 12 volts for the power distribution board, which is then connected to all the other components. Here are some of the special connections on the power distribution board. Here we have a 5 volt connection for the camera. Here we have a 24 volt connection for the CRIO, which we have split in order to power the pneumatic. And here's the 12 volt connection, which powers the power converter, which takes 12 volts and converts it to 5 volts for this year's wireless bridge. Note that the circuit breaker comes with this default cap. However, it is very flimsy and the electrical inspector will ask you to cover the connection with electrical tape. They will also ask you to do the same for the connections on the power distribution board. This is the 12 to 5 volt power converter. For the 2011 bridge, we only, it only needs 5 volts, but the power distribution board applies 12, so this takes in 12 and gives out 5. It's wagoed into the power distribution board and then connects directly to the bridge. This is our DC to DC 5 volt converter cable that plugs into the wireless bridge, just like that. Um, make sure that all the lights on it are visible to referees on the field at all times. As well, on the back, you want to make sure that it's in bridge mode so that it will work. This is our digital I.O. board. Over here we have the PWM inputs, which connect to various components on the robot, such as Jaguars and sensors. Here we have our RSL light, which says if we have communications or not, with the orange light at the top of our robot. Here we have the power that connects to the power distribution board. These are our relays for our motors. And this is the ribbon cable that connects us to the CRIO. You must be very careful with the digital I.O. board because as you can see there are many exposed inputs and outputs and if anything gets inside it can burn out the entire board and everything will not work. Okay. Trust us. Okay, this is our CRIO. We this year mounted it vertically to prevent any filings from getting inside of it and shorting it out, which is a bad idea because it is worth a lot of money. 
We have also capped the unused inputs. This is the solenoid breakout, the digital I.O. signal, and the analog breakout. This is the 24 volt power connector from the power distribution board. These are the Ethernet connection ports. This top one is for the wireless bridge and this bottom one is for our camera. This is the standard serial to digital I.O. module cable, but since we were so close on weight this year, we replaced it with this Andy Mark ribbon cable. Here's one of our four Jaguar speed controllers. On one side, it has it is connected to the power distribution board, which uses a 40 amp fuse. On the other side, it is connected to our SIM motors and the tough boxes that power and control our mechanum wheels. We also have a PWM cable that connects it to the digital I.O. board on our robot. It is always a good practice to cover any inputs or outputs that are not being used with a electrical tape so that you don't have any debris that gets in and can damage your Jaguar's performance. As marked, this is the voltage side and this is the motor side. It is critically important to wire these correctly because failure to do so will be a hundred dollar mistake and you will destroy your Jaguar. The same holds true for the spikes. They are clearly labeled motor side and voltage side. Note that SIM motors and Fisher-Price motors must be connected to a speed controller, while other motors such as the window motors and Bain bots can be connected to relays. This is one of our spike relays. We use these on a robot to power the two window motors for our lift and the compressor for the it is connected to the power distribution board with a 20 amp fuse and then it connects to whatever it's controlling. It also has a PWM cable that goes to our digital I.O. board. Each spike has a 20 amp fuse on it. For the spike powering your compressor, use the 20 amp snap action breaker as instead. The second tier of our electronics board contained the camera, the solenoids, other pneumatics components, and the gyro. Note that the pneumatic subsystem has a pressure switch which is connected to the CRO telling it when to turn off the compressor. During the electrical inspection, the inspector will intentionally short out the pressure switch just like that to test the pressure release valve on the compressor. This year we used 24 volt solenoids, which are directly connected to the solenoid breakout on the C-Rio. In previous years they used a 12 volt solenoid, which had to be connected to a spike. The solenoid's voltage is clearly labeled on the power input connector. Note that an electrical inspector will always check to make sure you use the proper minimum gauge wires for each component. This is the 12 gauge wire which you use when you have a 40 amp fuse and this is usually for SIM motors and Fisher Price motors. This is the 14 gauge wire and this is used when you have a 30 amp fuse. The 18 gauge wire is used with a 20 amp fuse. As part of your electrical inspection, the inspector will make sure that the electrical components are isolated from the chassis. Use a voltmeter measuring at ohms to verify that there is no continuity between the chassis and ground. Here are a couple tips to follow when you are wiring your electronics board. Make sure you are always wearing your safety glasses. Also, make sure that the electronics board is powered off when you are handling it. It is important to use tie wraps to secure the wires to the board so you can tell where they're going. Also, you should use labels 
so that you can tell which wire is connected to what. Make sure that there is not exposed metal on the wires that could possibly harm the performance of your electronics board. Good luck at the championship! championship.